Well, too much choice is bad for you, as I discovered on a recent trip to Liverpool. Now, Robin and I decided to shoot some urban landscapes in Liverpool, all that gritty texture and lines and form. And I packed myself a lot of prime lenses. I covered all bases from wide angle to telephoto. I covered too many bases. I also had with me a monopod, which I didn't use, and a big bag on my back. Now, all this isn't such a problem unless you are getting confused between which focal length to choose, as I was. I mean, I recently shot with a super zoom and that was a, that was a disaster. And I just stood there and racked the lens out and didn't really think about what I was shooting. So I went with the idea of using the prime lenses as I used to for cityscape shooting because it reduced my choice and then I took too many prime lenses with me. So anyway, have a quick look at the trip and then I'll uh, give you a bit of a summary as to what I think went wrong. Well, it's an urban trip today with Robin and we're back in Liverpool. Now I did say, did I not, when I was here last time, that shooting with a super zoom, or really any zoom, in this situation makes me lazy. I don't get the best images, I stand there and I just focus, or sorry, I just zoom in and out. So today I brought a bag full of primes. So I'll keep it brief about equipment. Any details about this uh, stuff I'm carrying will be in the notes below the video. It's 35mm Nikon film cameras with XP2 Super. Now, one thing I'm determined to do today, amongst all others, is not to take too many random snaps or poor images. I'm determined to go a little bit slower. Uh, changing lenses does help, slow me down, picking the right prime. And this is something I'm hoping in this year will improve my photography. Now, I don't think I could ever get bored of this particular building, no matter how many times I shoot it. And I'm praying that they actually renovate the building and retain the frontage at some point because it's just amazing. And the paintwork and the, the brickwork, it's just fantastic. Now, something else I'm keen to do a little bit more with today is to experiment and generally utilise shallower depth of field. I mean, you know, this is a nice subject area around here. Cut out this extraneous detail and maybe just incorporate this, this block of flats. But not really have them very sharp potentially let them just drop out a little bit so you know maybe about f4 with my standard lens yes this is exactly the result i was after i've got those very strong verticals and diagonals in there all vying for attention from your eye and also what i do like is the fact i have dropped that building on the right out of focus slightly because it isn't the main element it's just there to support the other components of the shot I mean, this was a gift to any photographer. I mean, you may think it's a colour shot, but I actually think it works very strong in black and white. It's absolutely perfect for my type of photography. I mean, another one in the same vein as the last one. This is, again, very strong, and I think it looks better in black and white than colour. There's less distraction in there. It's all about the image and not about the jarring colours. Yeah, I'm enjoying myself around the city today. The sun has finally come out, and I've been swapping around with lenses. A couple of uh, short telephoto shots, uh, nothing wide at all. I'm unlike to use the wide angle lens today, to be honest, but I do have a, one in my bag just in case. But with the sun now coming out, I'm able to do a lot more with these shadows and these sort of abstract shapes, which are perfect for black and white. I think by now I was starting to get my eye in, and this is the sort of strong graphic image I like when I'm shooting around cities. I do love the, the verticals in there. The shadow detail is fantastic, the way it mirrors the structure which is casting the shadow. And uh, yes, more of this, please, on trips like this. Oh, I quite like this signage. I mean, who wouldn't? It's beautiful. It's uh, tatty. It's old. But I can't really make anything of it. I'm not seeing anything special. I'm trying to isolate a window or two. It, it's just a window against some nice bricks. And the sign doesn't fall well. Uh, if I try to isolate the sign, I've got these winter sills, uh, sorry, these lintels cutting in. So uh, I'm actually going to pass on this one.
Now, I have by no means got my eye in yet today. I haven't really seen anything spectacular, um, but I am getting a feel for things, sort of messing about with the various subjects, etc. As I said, the light is getting a lot stronger, as you can probably tell now. And uh, we are heading up towards the cathedral. So, yeah, fingers crossed, but I am enjoying it. I'm really enjoying being out today and moving about and shooting these urban landscapes. Now with this doorway, I did like the signage above it, but in trying to get the whole thing in the frame here, you just catch the end of this sign and that is just spoiling it. Let me try and show you what I mean. If you just have a tip of that sign showing, it just ruins it. So I think I'd rather just focus in on the door itself. Um, very simple, very straightforward, but also keeps all the lines straight. Now I think I'll concede here that colour would have been a better option, but I wasn't shooting colour on the day. It's nice enough and I like the strong geometric shapes and it's all in proportion. Uh, but I think the top part of the image here has probably got most interest for me. And particularly this doorbell area here. I think I'd have been better cropping in and just focusing on that. Now this one is actually a little bit better in many respects because uh, the signs across the top here, so the writing up and down, is uh, very much easy to keep in the frame. Although I have to be careful I don't have too much extraneous detail in the 35 millimeter frame here uh, let's have a go at shooting it i may not put it up though Now finally, something I really do like. Now this was something I spotted quite quickly and I should have made more of. I should have done more compositions within this particular scene, but I love the, the sort of strange feeling it gives me when I look at it in black and white and what's the little dog doing there? I'm just, I don't know, I think about this one quite a lot and what I could have done with it. And the fact the dog's slightly out of focus just makes it a little bit more mysterious for me. Now there are some very interesting uh, patterns forming here and if you see these two, uh, I'll say the supports or uh, features of the building, I'm trying to create some separation just here and also here on this uh, circular part of the building, uh, trying to exclude some of the ugly bits like that light fitting and just try and basically build a sort of harmonious rectangle here, see how well it works. Now I wasn't going to put the next two frames in because I just don't like them but I thought I'd show you them anyway. This one, too close together, those lines, they're nearly touching. This one, that gap in the middle is distracting and that little tiny white triangle on the left. I just don't like it, to be honest. It's very, very windy at the moment and it's quite dull on this side, but you do get some lovely architecture and the little windows uh, parallel to each other. 
and also you've got a horizontal or vertical arrangement there with this lovely diagonal coming in so it's a case of cropping in with the longer lens and just uh, taking a section and not having this sky in here which is very distracting. Now this one's my favourite from the cathedral area. It doesn't shout cathedral, it could be anywhere, any sort of architecture, but it's all that playing of shadow and light. There's so many triangles and, and lines fighting for attention in there. I absolutely love it. Now the next shot represents a bit of a, a missed opportunity for me. These wonderful shapes on the left here, the little pyramid. I was going to make something very graphic and I got this one. I got two actually. And I thought I'd nailed it by getting that uh, person walking into the frame and it would make it a stronger image, but I've got him in the wrong place. He's half obscured by those dark doors so he doesn't stand out enough. So it's a bit of a missed opportunity all round that one. So we took a wander past the cathedral itself now and down into the university grounds, which are always deserted at the weekend and probably during the week as well, to be honest. And there is some nice architecture here, but it wasn't really grabbing me on this day. I was keen to get something a bit uh, stronger, a bit more contemporary perhaps. So I did wander around. Um, yeah, I took quite a few shots and I'm not going to bore you with them because they weren't very good, to be honest. I had some strong storm lighting here and a bit of a shower. And I absolutely love this, advertising repairs to your phone screen. And lo and behold, what happens? Uh, yes, their screen isn't working, yet they'll fix your phone screen for you. Fantastic, who'd have thought, eh? So, carried on back down through a rather uh, grotty area of Liverpool and eventually ended up right by the museums and the Picton Library, which is a beautiful area. Now, I've shot these cobbles before, and this is one from about 10 years ago, taken in the square format with the Yashica mat, far better than the 35mm elongated format. I love it. But there are lots and lots of things to see around here, but I did focus in on something I absolutely love, which is the reading room. And I put these trees in the front with the idea of creating chaos and random looks of nature in front of the orderly building and the straight line so it's a complete jumble and i focused on the the reading room sign itself so the branches wouldn't be the the central point you're, you're designed to go looking through the frame for the building behind but it's that juxtaposition that i like between the nature and the modern world well i'll be absolutely honest with you i have actually brought too much equipment with me um, and i'll say the same in the voiceover no doubt but i'll tell you now because uh, I wanted to realise, I realised while I was out photographing. The problem is, swapping between two or three different lenses is, uh, is hard work, to be honest, and I need to really stick to one or two lenses, like I used to years ago when I shot a lot more urban and uh, street photography. It was simpler, it was easier, it was clearer. I think I'll have to do it again next time. But anyway, I'm going to carry on today, 50mm or the 85 predominantly. Well, this is lovely. The signage here and, and the, the neon and the way these signs are arranged around the shop front are perfect for black and white. It's going to really stand out. Possibly the best thing I've seen today, but uh, we'll wait and see. It just doesn't work from this side at all. The neon light's not on and it obscures the sign above. Also, the, the buildings around it just aren't laid out as attractively as when you're shooting it from this direction. Now, this should really have been the strongest shot of the day, but what I'm finding this shot lacks is any character, any emotion. It's a bit flat, to be honest. I mean, I did try processing it here as a sort of pseudo lith print, but it's nowhere near as good as a real lith print. And it's something I'll have to revisit in the future in the darkroom, I think, to make a more, a more graphic image. Now, we did carry on shooting around the city for probably another hour or so. Light levels were dropping considerably. It was very, very dark. It was very stormy and wintry. And there is loads of material here, and if I get my frame rate right, that'd look good. But, yeah, we didn't go in there either, by the way. So we did end up having a coffee and cake down by the waterside. So primarily, my problem was carrying too many prime lenses. I should have reduced the inventory down to two, well, maybe even three lenses, but I think two would be a better balance. Probably something like a 35mm moderate wide and an 85mm moderate telephoto. If I couldn't shoot things with those, then I should shoot something else. Having all bases covered means I was swapping lenses all the time. Now, swapping lenses in that urban landscape is fiddly. The bags open and closing all the time. Bringing up the camera to your eye, it doesn't work. You put the, the camera back in the bag. You change the lens. You're tempted to leave the same lens on for a while to shoot the same focal length. 
And at that point, you do start to get your eye in for certain shots. At one point, I had the 135 millimeter on the camera and I was shooting nice long shots. I saw something which was pretty good actually and would need a moderate wide angle. And I couldn't be bothered changing the lens. I couldn't be bothered getting into the bag and swapping the lenses over. So I missed the shot. Had I concentrated on one or two lenses, it would have been a lot easier to make those decisions. My eye would have been in. So I am determined to do more of this type of shooting this year. It's something I've done for many years and not really featured uh, in my videos. And I want to do more of it because it was really good fun. And there are cafes everywhere and you can stop for lunch whenever you feel like it. So I hope you enjoyed my little ramble in the city with Robin and I'll see you again on the next one. Thanks for watching.